Hi, welcome back to Kalkine Media. I'm James Preston, live from Kalkine Studios in Sydney, and this is the Stocks in Action show. Let's have a look at the ASX 200 and the ASX and the ASX 200 and the ASX listed stocks that are trending today. The S&P ASX 200 is up today, gaining 9.8 points or 0.14% to 7,040.10. The top performing stocks in this index are Kogan.com Limited, up 7.93%, and Corporate Travel Management Limited, up 4.39%. Over the last five days, the index is virtually unchanged, but is currently 1.85% below its 52-week high. Nine of 11 sectors are higher, along with the S&P and ASX 200 index. Healthcare is the best performing sector, gaining 1.23%, and 3.09% for the past five days. Much of the change we're seeing is owing to a number of key global and domestic developments, which we will take a look at in more detail in just a moment. But firstly though, Wall Street closed on a mixed note last week. On Friday, the three major stock indices settled on a less than stellar nose. The indices opened higher but later fell amid a slight sell-off in technology and growth stocks, at the same time Bitcoin also traded lower. While the Dow Jones climbed 0.35%, the S&P 500 fell 0.1% and the Nasdaq dropped 0.5% of a percent as well. Turning our attention to liquid gold and crude oil prices jumped 2% on Friday after three days of losses driven higher as a storm formed in the Gulf of Mexico. While the West Texas Intermediate crude oil price jumped 2.7% to US $63.58 a barrel, the Brent crude oil price soared 2% to US $66.4 a barrel. The rise in crude oil prices may have an impact on energy stocks such as Woodside Petroleum Limited and Santos Limited on Monday. And to actual gold, the prices of our favourite yellow metal traded lower on Friday amid easing Israel and Palestine tensions and the prospect of monetary tightening discussion by the US Federal Reserve. On Friday, the spot gold price fell 0.3% to US $1,878.9 an ounce. Gold stocks such as Newcrest Mining Limited and Northern Star Resources Limited would be on watch on Monday. Moving on, the ABS released calendar for this week is looking very full. The Australian Bureau of Statistics is scheduled to come out with a whole slew of data, including some very important releases, which may have an impact on the market itself. On Tuesday, the ABS will release international merchandise trade and weekly payroll jobs, plus wages data. On Wednesday, construction work data will also be rolled out. On Thursday, the ABS will release data on business conditions and sentiments and labour force. And on Friday, the data on Australian national accounts for financial year 2018 to 2019 will also be released. Checking out the commodity space, iron ore has dipped after China's move to cap commodity prices. Iron ore prices plummeted due to strong sell-offs as China wants to cap exorbitant commodity pricing. And iron ore has indeed slipped below many predictions, dropping all the way down to US $200 per tonne on Friday despite recording nearly 24% year-to-date gains amidst robust demand from Chinese steelmakers. Iron ore prices surged since the second half of 2020 after COVID-19 vaccine trials encouraged investors to look ahead to lift the global economy from pandemic dips. But we are still seeing some lagging results in that sector. As per the World Steel Association's data, Global steel output has increased by nearly 23.3% in the last month compared to the previous corresponding period. The rising commodity prices have raised inflation concerns in China, hence the officials drafted a five-year plan to slash its dependency on iron ore imports by planning new investments and seeking 
new imports from Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Russia and Myanmar. So a whole slew of new selections for Chinese investors. The country has decided to limit its import from Australia, accounting for around 60% of Chinese imports. And that, of course, follows from the ongoing war between Scott Morrison and Chinese officials in regards to both tariffs and exporting and importing goods. And now, before I share quick updates on the trending ASX listed stocks, it's time for a short break, but don't you go too far. We'll be back in just a moment. Kalkine TV will take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Welcome back to Calkine Media. I'm James and you're watching the Stocks in Action show. Let's have a look at some major news from the ASX listed companies from across our various sectors. First and foremost, Dynamic Drill and Blast has surged in securing funds for US expansion. Dynamic Drill and Blast Holdings Limited rose as much as 17% to Australian dollars 0.550. It's the highest since the 18th of February 2021. The drilling services provider confirmed it received commitments to raise Australian $10 million by issuing 22.2 million shares in the company. Dynamic Drill and Blast stated it will use some funds to acquire US-based Orlando Drilling Pty Ltd and the rest for future growth plans. It was also revealed that a major shareholder from Orlando has subscribed for shares worth 13.7%. Around 180,000 shares were traded as compared to the 30-day average volume of 34,774 shares. Though the stock is down 16.1% this year, as of the last close, Dynamic Drill and Blast Holdings Limited was spotted trading at around 8.5% higher at Australian dollars 0.510 per share at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Now moving on to Kin Mining and the company reported the final results of recently completed follow-up air core drilling at the Eagle Crow Prospect. The assay is located near Lenora in Western Australia and already there's been a high yield of shallow high-grade gold mineralisation zones. Results from previously reported high-grade intercepts indicate the extensive nature of the mineralisation and define two parallel zones of deposits highlighting the potential for an extensive shallow gold discovery. Mineralization is the same style deposits as the CGP, Bruno Lewis and Cardinia Hill, and drilling has been completed across 18 lines, spanning 3.8 kilometers, including several infill lines as well. Moreover, initial diamond and reverse circulation drilling will confirm the orientation and extension of further shallow gold mineralization. It will commence shortly after completion of drilling at the Rangoon and Cardinia Hill deposits. So potentially plenty of gold stores up in store for us. Meanwhile, this ASX listed stock is in the news today. Brookside Energy advances drilling operations at Jewel Well. And as a result, the shares have surged on the ASX. Brookside Energy Limited shared via an ASX announcement that drilling operations at Jewel Well, located in Brookside's Swish area of interest in Ananarko Basin, are proceeding safely on schedule. The company informed that Jewel Well curve successfully landed in the Sycamore Formation at the design depth, and the liner has been set and cemented. As of now, the drilling is on the horizontal section, at a measured depth of around 8,700 feet. Brookside Energy has confirmed that these reports are indeed accurate 
and they are moving on to the next phase of their discovery. Now moving on to the next big news and Signlate slashes down its financial year 2021 targets. Signlate Milk Limited has updated its full year guidance for financial year 21 after board and management reviewed the impact of previously disclosed risks affecting Signlate's performance. The company expects ongoing shipping delays to result in the sale of some ingredient products occurring post financial year 2021 balance date. It expects to achieve lower than usual prices for ingredient products because of sales, phasing and of course also volume pressure. It is adopting to a more conservative approach to value and also obtain year end inventory volume targets. Signlate now expects to deliver a net profit after tax loss somewhere between New Zealand $20 million to New Zealand $30 million in financial year 2021. Signlate's banking syndicate has supportively granted a waiver of relevant covenants in financial year 2021 and the company is working to ensure it has the appropriate funding for the next financial year as it does not intend to undertake a capital raising. Meanwhile, there's news about a number of ASX limited stocks. So let's take a little closer look at those, including Cicero's research for Idea, which has offered positive nickel sulfide and gold prospects. Idea Resources Limited via an ASX release has updated its collaborative study with Australia's National Science Agency. Cicero came through with a new report on the 24th of May 2021 and the company has completed the gold in nickel laterite study and has identified aspects that will significantly assist future gold exploration. The research suggests the potential for nickel sulfide mineralization at depth and the company said a second study would shortly commence in July to fully assess the potential for nickel sulfides beneath the nickel laterite deposits. Nickel sulfide and gold targets will be tested using the new knowledge defined by Cicero's study. All right, well, that's all the time we have for now. My name is James Preston. It's been great having your company here on Calcine Media, but make sure to stay tuned to Calcine for more live market updates, the latest news on markets, and of course, all the important information for our global economic developments. I'll catch you soon right here on Calcine Media.